a really, really weird product. Why doesn't their whole line behave like that? And it's just really not cute. What's up guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be playing with the entire line from the brand Onomi. I have one, two, three, four, five, six products sitting here in front of me. This is not sponsored. They did not send me these products. I paid for every single one of these products so that I could give you guys a what's worth it and what's not of this entire brand. I'm really enjoying this format of doing a what's worth it and what's not on specific brands. Some of these products are an insane home run, like run, do not walk. And some of them are so missable and so so not worth your money and so I want to be able to help you guys navigate that. We are going to be talking today about, I don't really know what order to go in here. We've got the Onomi Powerful Priming Serum for a whopping $50. We have the ACE Illuminating Eye Treatment for a whopping $40. The Onomi Boosting Lip and Cheek Stick, which if you are not new here, you know this is probably one of the products that initially piqued my interest in the brand to begin with. I really like this product. The Onomi Bright Con... Hmm. All right, Khaki, we're gonna read now. Bright Concealing Elixir. Concealing's a word that I actually interact with all the time. And this was $30. This was also $30. This was also $30. This is the AHA! Perfecting Setting Powder, A-H-A, get it? And uh, finally, the Onomi Radical Setting Mist, which is also $30. Let me spend the money so that you guys don't have to, and we're going to go ahead and jump into talking all about what's worth it and what's not from Onomi. So if you are unfamiliar with the brand, they are very skincare first, and we are actually going to put them on my face today. I don't have any makeup on right now. We're going to start with the Powerful Priming Serum. That's what it looks like. It's just kind of a a yellowy, slightly iridescent kind of thing. This has a lot of skincare claims that we will get to in just a second. I should also mention that through our partnership with the nonprofit She's the First, we've committed to 1% of annual revenue and team resources to help sponsor first generation female high school graduates in low income countries. That is a thing that Onomi does, that's pretty cool. So their description of the powerful priming serum is an antioxidant packed serum and makeup primer in one. This serum meets primer, replenishes the skin, boosts radiance, and evens tone and texture while priming skin for makeup application. Infused with daisy flower extract to brighten and even skin tone, blackjack botanical to increase collagen production and willow bark extract to encourage cell turnover. Our PPS is clinically proven to bring a visible improvement to skin's tone and texture. Used daily, our powerful priming serum leaves skin healthier with or without makeup. Also, I think the hair is going back. My hair only stays cute for about five minutes. <laughs> and then it just drives me nuts and I have to pull it back. So do I think this product is worth it? I've been using all of these for about a month now, some of them even longer, and I don't really think that this is like groundbreaking. It's not making some huge difference in my skin. Maybe that's because I already use so much great skincare that I love so much that this doesn't make a noticeable difference. If this is your first piece of really high-end skincare, makeup, whatever, and you start to notice a really huge difference, then that's fantastic. But I, again, just kind of mixed in with everything that I use, this is not an impactful product to me. Okay, next. <laughs> We're going to talk about the Bright Concealing Elixir. This was a product that one of you guys requested that I review, and that's what got me started down this rabbit hole, essentially. This is a really, really weird product. I cannot put a fine enough point on how weird this product is. <laughs> you notice I'm shaking it quite a lot. It separates, it separates a lot. Like, I don't really know what it's supposed to be like because I've only interacted with it when it's separated. And a lot of times it will just kind of squirt this brown serum out and, and then pigment. And I'm not sure if I'm like wasting the serum, if it's supposed to be more evenly distributed. distributed. I'm not sure, but this is what it looks like when it comes out. It's kind of odd. And in case you were curious, I filmed this close up to show you what it looks like when you don't shake the heck out of it before you dispense it. So you can see kind of what we're working with here. It just is like pigment suspended in a lot of skincare and you can definitely see that they're fighting each other. However, when this goes on the skin, which I, I'm not a huge fan of a tube, what's crazy about this is how actually highly concentrated this pigment is. Let's find a sponge. You can get so much mileage out of a small application of this product. Do I like the texture? You know, it's okay, but it does have pretty noticeable coverage for being such a thin product and using so little of it. See what I mean? I mean, that's 
that's makeup, you know? Like, you notice that. That's got really distinct pigment on the skin. It is not behaving like a Glossier, you know, or an RMS. It's not doing something dewy that's trying to impersonate skin. It is very much makeup. And that's what kind of confuses me about this line. I'm not sure how to use all the products together because, as you will see in a moment, we have cream products and then we also have these very matte pigment products and also a very mattifying powder that really is what the confusion hinges on. Like I said, we'll get there. There's coverage there and it's extremely lightweight. It does get crepey and I'm not sure if it is the primer or the concealer or the powder, but it will get crepey under my eyes and I don't feel like it's very resilient to humidity. I feel like anytime my eyes run or it's humid outside or something like that, it'll crease, it'll break up. It does things that don't really make sense. It'll get dry, but then it'll also crease. I would not recommend running out and buying this product. It is super bizarre. Bright Concealing Elixir, $30, a creamy concealer clinically proven to correct dark circles. Correct dark circles. I wonder if they mean over time actually do something about your dark circles, not just cover them. A creamy lightweight concealer infused with nine actives includes caffeine to ease puffiness, night sleeper extract, I feel like they're just making this stuff up. Night sleeper extract to promote circulation and alfalfa extract to calm inflammation. Our ultra concentrated BCE instantly covers dark circles while simultaneously correcting them over time and is clinically proven to reduce fine lines. Available in 11 shades, all named after brilliant women in history. I should say I got mine in the shade Shikibu Fair Warm. That is pretty cool. 11 shades of this concealer and it's fine. So the next thing is a very interesting product. <laughs> it took me a minute to figure this one out. This is the ACE Illuminating Eye Treatment. It is a highlighter cream. It comes in this little pump and it goes here-ish. This is one of those products where I'm like, and you make a powder, but you want me to use this. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this on first and then we're going to powder very discerningly. We're going to make some decisions on where I put powder because I do feel like we're navigating kind of a strange minefield here of recommended uses of cream products and then also them selling this like very cornstarchy powder. I just, I think that that's a big hang up for me is when someone has a really small line and the products don't intuitively go together. Like you look at Westman Atelier and they're like, you need all of our products, sometimes in multiple colors and you're like okay you know maybe maybe not but I get that you created a capsule collection that is designed to be my entire makeup collection and like that's really cool to me they all just cooperate together if I were going to want to spend you know 60 or 70 dollars on every single cream blush that I own this doesn't do that I feel like they just kind of created a bunch of ad hoc products that don't necessarily talk to each other anyway this is this interesting little illumination situation. I'll go ahead and just kind of spread that out. So it's a really pretty illuminator. It is. One of the big things here is you can smell the active ingredient in this. It smells like vinegar. So that's definitely something to consider. Like how often do you wake up in the morning and go, that's the first thing I want to smell. Coffee while I'm drinking it and vinegar as I'm putting this product on my face. Um, Illumination wise, I'm not really getting much and I think that that's because I'm doing it with a sponge. Let's try it with a brush like I have been doing. So I'm going in with my little Thrive stubby brush here that I love. This is what I use for like pretty much all of my cream product application and it doesn't soak product up as much as a sponge which I like. So you'll see, you know, you get a tiny bit of coverage and it does dab on and kind of blend nicely. But you know, am I getting like a highlighter vibe? Not really. So it's... It's trying to be a multitasker and really it's just kind of a skincare product that happens to have a tiny bit of iridescence to it. It doesn't really satisfy my itch for wanting a highlight on my face. That said, it's probably helping me avoid crow's feet. I'm not sure. I mean, the first claim is that it's a highlighter, which I'm gonna go ahead and call shenanigans on. It just doesn't really do the trick on being a highlighter. It's okay, but I don't know. It's $40, two-in-one treatment and highlighter with vitamins A, C, and E comes in three shades. I got the shade 
Love Lace. So it says our luxuriously lightweight velvety eye treatment meets highlighter instantly brightens eyes and leaves the skin with a warm fresh glow and a hint, a hint of luminescence. Emphasis on hint. Infused with vitamin A to reduce dark spots. 10% vitamin C, that's a lot, they say, to improve skin texture and vitamin E to hydrate and protect skin from free radicals. Our ACE is clinically proven to smooth fine lines over time with daily, daily use, available in three shades, all named after brilliant women in history. They say they put every product through rigorous instrumental testing to prove they are as efficacious as they say they are. Each product is tested under a panel of 30 women run by a neutral third party to ensure accurate and unbiased results. And they do have before and afters here, you know, showing clinical improvement for, you know, fine lines and things like that. So I don't dislike this product and I think that it's pretty ingenious to have a product that's specifically designed for that part of your face that also happens to be a highlighter. I just don't really know if it scratches the highlighter itch and I'm not sure it's worth $40. Okay, let's talk about one of my fave products, regardless of the brand. This is just my go-to cheek product lately. And this is the Onomi Boosting Lip and Cheek Stick, and I have it in the shade Cruise. There are a lot of really beautiful shades in this that I would probably buy if I didn't already own as many cheek products as I do, because you guys have definitely seen how many cheek products I own. It's kind of crazy. I will say though, when I use this, I don't love it with the texture of this concealer. And I will zoom in and show you guys how this concealer is kind of behaving as it dries down and settles in. This stays so beautiful and dewy. We get this watercolor effect on the skin. It has this perfect satin finish. I don't feel like it's like lip gloss. By the way, you guys, I went to the VIB sale for the first time yesterday, you know, since it started, and I had gotten a request to try the new Ilia liquid blushes. First of all, I get to the counter and I'm looking for them and they're, they're so small, you guys. They're like, what, like $35 or something? And it looks like a sample. It's so small. I was like, mm, okay. And then you open it up and it's got one of those kind of whip tips on it. You know, the little metal guys that you see on like the hourglass lip gloss and stuff like that. It's very luxurious looking, but it comes out like a lip gloss. And I was very, <laughs> unimpressed with kind of the color payoff and the texture. I was like, I can't dab this on. This feels a lot like the Oleo at Oso or something like that, where it's like the only thing that you would want to have on your face. It doesn't want to kind of cooperate with something that might move around underneath it. And so I did not buy it. So I'm sorry to the person who recommended slash requested a review on that, but I just was really unimpressed when I saw it in the store. Okay, so, <laughs> Because I have no other cheek pigment on, that is like pretty high contrast, especially with the white underneath my eyes that that concealer has created. But we're just gonna kind of go with it for a minute because I'm not gonna put other brands of products on just yet. For now, just bear with me on my raccoon eyes, my reverse raccoon eyes, really. And we're going to talk about this here powder. I was so excited, you guys. I mean, expectation versus reality. My expectations were so high for this. I was expecting it to be so lightweight. It is very similar to the RMS Unpowder in the sense that if you wanna use it to just dab in certain places, it seems to work okay, but it's super cornstarchy. And so if you try and actually set your whole face with it, good luck. It will ruin everything. It's so grainy and it makes all of your makeup look super grainy. It makes it break up. And so I was just so disappointed in this powder. And I, you guys, I tried it with everything. I tried it with a dewy foundation. I tried it with a matte foundation. I tried it with no foundation. I tried it with just this concealer. And I am, I'm about to ruin my makeup look by putting this on. And that's just what's about to happen. So this is what it looks like when you open it up. It also has a little powder puff in here that I tried to use. Do not recommend. This is the new Thrive Blush Brush and I'm going to use that because it's small, so we can kind of be choosy where we put this. So if I wanted to set my under eyes with this, right? And I'm not trying to bake here, I'm just trying to dab this on. So maybe 
if I wanted to put eyeshadow on with an otherwise dewy face look, you know, which I don't always recommend. I kind of feel like the light is always going to hit a powdery spot differently than an unpowdery spot, but you know, I'm always looking for something that'll help me cheat that if I can. So let's just say that I want to, you know, keep my T-zone from getting oily and I want to set around my eyes and I also want to keep this makeup underneath my nose because I want to cover my melasma. You can see, yes, you know, there is the lights hitting it differently. I, you know, I end up with like zoogly zoo face. When I try and powder enough to actually set a foundation so that I can put more powder products on top, a bronzer or blush or something like that, this doesn't do it enough. It won't set your foundation enough that it won't move around if you then try and put powder products on top, but of course it doesn't work with cream products, you know? You can tell that because we end up with such a such a contrast in the way that the light hits one versus the other. These are just two very disparate textures. So if I were to try and make this work, you know, like take my sponge, just kind of, you know, blend this cheek product in with a little bit of the powder. <sighs> I guess I could make that work. Oh, you guys, I'm gonna zoom in. You guys gotta see underneath my eyes. It's just, it's kind of, it's kind of a dumpster fire. Can you see how really unpleasant that texture is underneath my eyes? It is both creasing and making the concealer almost entirely translucent to the point where I feel like the powder soaked up any moisture that was living on my skin as a result of putting that concealer on and just turned it into, it looks like I've been wearing it all day. You know, it looks like what concealer looks like when it breaks up on you at the end of the day and you're like, oh well, it probably looked good for four hours or something and then it just started to kind of, you know, go downhill. This automatically looks like it's gone downhill and I'm just so disappointed especially because the lighting in here is really flattering the one in my actual bathroom my master bath is very very honest it's like your car flip down mirror the mirror of truth and I will get to that mirror and I can see straight through my makeup to my skin as if it's pixelated as if it's you know, white noise static on the TV. That's what this powder does. It's like it's over absorbent and so it takes every bit of moisture on your face, sucks it into these little particles and you get in the wrong lighting and all you see is powder and it's just really not cute. Aha! AHA. Perfecting setting powder, a feather light translucent setting powder packed with skincare benefits. A lightweight sheer and silky setting powder infused with lactic acid for hydration and exfoliation, peptides for collagen boosting, and time release vitamin C to block free radicals, even skin tone, and smooth fine lines. Our innovative encapsulated formula provides lasting wear and all day delivery of beneficial nutrients to the skin. And it comes in one shade, it's just a translucent shade. You guys, I get it. And I really appreciate there being skincare ingredients in my setting powder. I love the idea of always coming from a skincare first standpoint. However, the behavior of this product is just not there. It just doesn't do enough as a powder to justify the benefits of putting this on my skin, basically. I really, I find this one to be the absolute biggest fail in their entire collection. I think that it is just so unbelievably disappointing. It will ruin a face of makeup. This doesn't even work when you use it on its own products as a spot powder. And I just can't get behind it. I'm going to put the rest of my makeup on. I'm gonna try and fix this. And we will come back and talk about this if you don't already know my thoughts on it. Uh, I will be right back. All right, guys. <laughs> I tried. What I ended up doing is actually just gently powdering everything and then trying to go in with powder products because I just didn't think creams were going to cooperate on top of that weird powder situation that I had going on. I wear very little makeup on my face in one go at any given time. I want to know that each of the products that I'm using is going to 
kick butt, you know? I'm very discerning about the few products that I do choose to put on my face, and I feel like this concealer and powder, especially in combination, they're just really working against me. That said, I would argue that this right here can fix almost anything. <laughs> Emphasis on the almost. So this is the Onomi Radical Setting Mist, and I discovered this what, six weeks ago or something? And I can't stop using it. It is so unbelievably beautiful. It is so dewy, which is what's so confusing about this line. We do, we have these beautiful bouncy products and then we have products that, I mean, just you land flat footed if we're talking about bounce. We will do a final thoughts roundup here in a second, but let's go ahead and spritz my face with the champion here. Mm. Smells like rose. It leaves your skin outrageously dewy, especially if you don't put a powder on underneath it. Like if you want like dewy, 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 you can wear this on top of no powder and it will still probably, I don't know, kind of set your makeup and it will give you this like ultra sheen in, in like the most beautiful way, if that's your thing. It is a fantastic actual wear time setting spray too. It does a really, really good job of setting powders and making them stick. Melts everything into the skin really beautifully, but really I say emphasis on the almost because I will still use that. Get down into my truth mirror in my bathroom and just see the truth. I will see the flaws in the formula underneath my eyes and it is something that I don't think is reasonable. It is something that I will wash off. I won't go out with my makeup like this because I do, I think that it's making me look older. I don't want makeup, especially skincare that's got all this anti-aging in it. It's making my eyes look like they have more age than they do. And that is just really not what I want, especially for the price, but regardless of the price, that's not what I want. So let's talk final thoughts on Oh Noni. The serum, take it or leave it. It seems fine. I'm going to continue using it. Nothing about this says go out and spend $50 to me, but it might be the first really great skincare product someone buys, in which case they might notice a huge difference in their skin. I'm not sure my skin is so spoiled. I'm just gonna go ahead and admit it. The concealer, I, I, I don't have time for this. This doesn't do anything for me. I will say if I need some extra coverage anywhere not under my eyes, I think that I could probably get away with this, but I shouldn't have to think around hacks in order to make a product work. This, for the price especially, but for all of its promises, should practically put itself on for me, and it just doesn't. And it, it is so disappointing, and I do not recommend buying it. The highlighter is, again, a take it or leave it kind of product. If it's more worth it to you to know that there are really great time-released skincare benefits in an eye cream that you're wearing as a makeup through the day, and you're not super duper concerned with getting like a crazy glow. I have the Natasha Denona Super Glow on right now. I know it's not a clean product. I haven't found a really good powder highlight that I like yet. <laughs> this is going to be a much more subtle glow. This is not going to give you some kind of really satisfying glint on your cheeks or anything like that, but it does have really great skincare benefits and you can smell them. <laughs> be warned. The boosting lip and cheek stick is a run do not walk situation. If you are a cream product person, if you find that your skin really thrives when you use cream products, this is one of the best ones that I've found. In fact, I don't think I talked about the benefits of it. Sorry. So yeah, it's $30 replenishing collagen boosting formula with a hint of buildable color. I would not say it's a hint. It's very saturated, at least the shade that I have Cruz. This hydrating plumping balm contains a hint of buildable color to give you a healthy natural glow. Our dual function smoothing balm is packed with naturally derived extracts like cacao oil, sunflower seed oil, and shea butter, which are clinically proven to promote microcirculation, soften fine lines, and boost collagen production, available in six shades named for the, the world's most brilliant women. So it does come in six really beautiful shades. You can see them right there, kind of, can you? And they are, they're really pretty. I'd say that the most popular one is Tamar and it sells out all the time. Um, but I, I love Cruise. I love the berry shade. I would really, I would try this in any shade that they do because I love the formula so much. It doesn't have any opacity to it. It doesn't have any white backing it up. So it is just a kind of a watercolor wash, which is really, really nice for all skin tones. And it does do what it says it's gonna do. It plumps your skin. It leaves your skin looking so bouncy and healthy and hydrated and beautiful. And it has really great wear time. I, I feel so weird 
talking about it like that because why doesn't their whole line behave like that? Why didn't we chase the feeling of the minimal phase and trying to make things look more healthy? Why is the concealer so matte and drying? Why is the powder so dehydrating? I don't know. So talking about the powder, again, this is a $30 product. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this because this is not useful to me. This is not usable to me. Even if I were going to do, like I said, a full beat, cause this is, I don't know, am I interpreting the packaging wrong? There's something about a loose powder that says, use me everywhere. This is just not that. It's fantastic in terms of the skincare value of it, but when it comes to actual performance, it's not worth wearing on my face. I end up with this really gnarly flashback situation. And if you look really close, like we did a minute ago, it's just really powdery and unflattering and it looks like I've been wearing it all day and it looks like my eyes are older than they are. So that's not good. Finally, Brun Do Not Walk. This is one of the most beautiful setting sprays I have ever found. It's actually cost effective compared to a lot of the setting sprays that are on the market. If you're an Urban Decay girl or something like that, this is five ounces for $30. You're gonna pay $32 for like three and a half ounces for Urban Decay. And so, I mean, this just wins. It really hits all the marks for me, especially if you're looking for something that's going to give you a really bouncy, dewy finish. It still doesn't salvage the crimes that are happening around my eyes, but if you put this over makeup that you already like, it's going to knock your socks off. So yes, these are the two big takeaways, absolutely lip and cheek stick and the radical setting mist. These are the two kind of like, if you really, really care about the skincare that's in your makeup, I don't hate these, I'm going to continue using them. These two things, the concealer and the powder, actually actively offend me. So do not buy them. If you're asking my advice, do not waste your money on those two products. Guys, these are my final thoughts on all of the Onomi line. I love this format, like I said, being able to give you guys an exhaustive review on an entire brand. I'm going to have more of them coming up soon. I'm going to have one for Thrive, which like buckle in, that's gonna be like a 45 minute video. And a lot of feelings here and I'm glad that I got to get them all out with you guys. So if you did enjoy this, if you found this useful, do give it a thumbs up. If you disagree with me on some of the performance of these products and you have some hacks on how to make them work, let me know. I own them at this point. I would love to make them work. What am I doing wrong if I'm doing something wrong? Tell me, I would love to know. If this is your first time here and you had fun watching this and you appreciate these informative, you know, sometimes kind of long-winded videos, maybe consider subscribing while you're here. Hit the little button down below. We would love to have you. This is a very supportive, very positive family and we have a lot of fun. So uh, thank you so much for watching today, guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. I love you as always, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.